Also, what I, what I think is funny, well, a few things about Solana. It used to be down all the time, um, and now it just has a lot of inflation. So apparently the way Solana works is that they inflate it a lot to subsidize the fees to be cheaper, which then, if the guys that are getting inflation ever decide to sell it, is going to suck. So Solana has very high inflation compared to Bitcoin. Bitcoin has very high inflation compared to Ethereum. And I think Ethereum's inflation is very similar to Pulse Chains, but I'd have to look. There's some website that has like a counter. Because basically in Ethereum and Pulse Chain, they both use EIP-1559. And even though Pulse Chain has 25% less base inflation, so if, if the gas usage on both systems was the same, Pulse Chain would inflate 25% less. Um, but EIP-1559 introduces burning and burning increases as a result of what percentage of the block space you're using. So they target 30 million gas, and then the fees get a lot higher if you go over half of that. So they're really targeting 15 million gas of the 30 million max. And Pulse Chain inherited a lot of those parameters. So long story short, because the gas fees are so cheap on Pulse, we might not be pushing into that gas demand as hard, so we might not, burning it, not, be, might not be burning as much. So there's a chance that Pulse Chain is inflating a little bit more than Ethereum, but probably, last time I checked, still less than Bitcoin. Yay. We're talking like Bitcoin's at like 1.2% inflation and like Ethereum's negative 0.18 or something. These are very small percentages. So, but, you know, a percentage of a very large market cap is a lot of money. So when you talk about Bitcoin inflating at 1%, you know, 1% of $500 billion is what? What is that? Calc 500 billion times 1.5 over 100. Wow, that's 7.5 billion. That's a lot of money. Wow. Um, is, is Bitcoin worth? 500 billion? Let's look. Uh, yep. It's 855 billion. Wow. So basically that means that the miners are getting paid billions of dollars a year to dump the price to enrich mining hardware manufacturers and electric companies and harm the environment. Hey, but most of it's renewable. Yeah, but not all of it. So there you go. Still hurting the environment. Pulse Chain solved this. Also, Ethereum solved this, right? You don't need to destroy the environment or enrich electricity companies or enrich mining hardware manufacturers to maintain a consensus network, period. And funny thing about Bitcoin consensus network is it actually sucks. So uh, you guys that like Bitcoin that are watching, screw you guys and screw your bags. I'm going to educate you all. And, and half you guys sent all of your people to go get yield and things that went bankrupt. Why? Because you can't get yield online. Why? Because Bitcoin sucks. Oh, you want to get into a stable coin? You got on-chain exchange? No. Oh, wrecked. Oh, you want to, uh, you know, have high throughput? I, I think the throughput is at least four and a half times higher on Pulse Chain than Bitcoin. But also, uh, how many times cheaper? Let's look here. Gas. 45,000 times cheaper, but it also has more features. And if you if you just compare like a network that only does sends on Bitcoin versus another network like Pulse Chain and just pretend it was only doing sends, it'd be a lot more than 4.5. That 4.5 number is based on like the average usage and the average usage is a lot of complicated stuff like swaps and staking and unstaking and all kinds of stuff. And so if you like took the usage of the network and, and like equalized it with just sending native tokens back and forth, it would be like maybe 30 times. I can't remember. I did this math once before, like a month ago, but it's significantly more than four and a half times. So Pulse Chain versus Bitcoin, better for the environment, lower inflation, uh, better features, more secure, never been hacked, uh, on down the list. It's a superior network. Now, what does Bitcoin have? More liquidity. Why? It's been around for 10 times longer. And it hasn't been gatekept by every possible thing, which is fine. So, you know, at some point, someone is going to, I guess there's some people in Australia already doing it, but like 
the best time to buy Bitcoin was when everyone thought it was a scam. The best time to buy Bitcoin was when it had the lowest liquidity. The best time when I, when you could buy Bitcoin was when it was almost traded on no exchange anywhere. It was nearly impossible to buy. The only place you could buy it was like Mt. Gox, Magic the Gathering Online Exchange in Japan. That was the best time to buy Bitcoin. Cool. Well, Pulse Chain has some of those parameters. It's still very early. This gatekeeping that everyone's doing, it can't get any worse. It can only get better, right? Like the gates can only open. And basically, look, screw these guys, right? Hex went up 10,000 fold before staking profit uh, with the same gatekeeping trash, same garbage. So great. Now the gas fees are even cheaper because Pulse Chain exists um, for everybody, right? Like, congrats, everybody. Congrats, everybody on the Ethereum network that was enriched by the free launch of Pulse Chain for you guys.